for love. Why can I hear myself? All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Full Circle. I'm Kay. I'm going to be your host for this interview. And um, if you guys don't know who I am, I'm a tournament host and referee. You might see me around. I am joined here uh, by Miles. I'm going to have them all introduce themselves. So, Miles, why don't you take it away for us? Uh, hi, Kay. I mean, I just got jump scared by that intro. I didn't know that was there. I kind of just like, like kind of jolted backwards after that. But uh, 
Yeah, you guys might know me. I cast for a lot of big tournaments. I also do map pooling, and I'm also kind of high-ranked player. Used to probably know me as attorney player if you were around back in 2020, 2019, but a little more active on the staffing side nowadays, so I'm glad to be here, of course. Next on our list, we have Knott. Knott, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for us, sir? Hey, I have the right profile picture this time around. Yeah, I, uh, I commentate. Uh, I think that's what people know me for. I have also played on the Swedish OWC team. I uh I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty dog shit at the game, but don't worry about it. It's uh I'm <laughs> I don't do lie. that as much. <laughs> You're the goat. I, Can't I, believe this man is spending I don't, I don't know if I'd go that far, but uh yeah, whatever. It's uh it's all it's Anyways. all in order. This time I also have the not capitalized N. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> True. So perfect. Next we have Sad Shiva. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, I'm Shiva. I'm Sad Shiva as well. I have Sad Shiva as my agent, as you, but I normally go by Shiva. Uh, I'm a tournament commentator. Uh, I started in 2022, and I've kind of very quickly started commentating a lot of uh, open rank tournaments, and I've been active since, and I'm pursuing esports commentary. So yeah, pretty cool. All right, let's move on to you know some of the hot things that are going on this week in 3WC Finals recap. Ah, uh, super, super awesome matches. Four matches this weekend. Let's go over the first one. South Korea versus the United States in the winner's bracket. Seven to five with South Korea winning. What, like, what an insane match. Yeah, totally. I mean, like, South Korea and the USA, we all got to know them well during OWC. Definitely a budding rivalry we're seeing now across all rank ranges. 3WC, open rank. It was really just a battle of titans. You couldn't really establish too much of an advantage on many specific skill sets in that matchup. Obviously, going going seven to five off of what was actually an insane Nomad one clutch from South Korea, but definitely just an all around insane match by two of the top teams in the tournament. Yeah, it was a, it was a great match. I think I, I was expecting something as high tier as that. Uh, as you mentioned before, USA and South Korea have such a legendary rivalry. Um, they've always been super, super competitive towards each other. But this match definitely um, was a victory for South Korea. Uh, it's kind of a repeat of um, OS World Cup. Um, this, however, you know this this three WC. This is probably one of the one of the other times where you know we're starting to question whether USA are actually going to be able to beat South Korea in Grand Finals this time. Of course, it's a different roster, but there are lots of OWC players in both of their respective teams, and both of them still have some really, really good potential. But I was really uh, excited for that match, and that was a great match to watch. And uh, yeah, that No Mod 1, man, that oh, final yeah, No Mod 1, that, that, no that was, the three that way was incredible. <laughs> yeah, I, that was a super insane final map clutch for South Korea. They're not kind of known on paper for being a beast on aim, but... They, they having a three-way FC on a final stage number one is absolutely unreal. I can imagine that completely shattered the U.S. mental at the very end. But yeah, it was a, it was a great way to finish it off and kind of you know assert that um, security in grand finals. I, I think in general, you know, South Korea has been up and coming this year, and even you know we saw their performance in OWC, like you said, of just how dominant they are. The United States, for for the longest time, for years on end, were seen as this untouchable force, you know, this level that couldn't be reached. And now, you know, we're seeing other countries trying to you know stepping it up and being like, hey, you know, we can do it too. Yeah, and I mean... moving on. Oh, sorry, go. go All right, yeah, sorry, just one more thing. Um. I'm really excited to see if these teams match up again. Obviously, we saw a similar thing in OWC where South Korea, very, very clutch, took out the USA in semifinals. Uh, but USA running through loser's bracket and meeting them very, very strong in that grand finals. We're going to see if USA can face uh, Hong Kong, I believe, in that loser's grands. It's going to be a really tough matchup for them. But if they get back to grands, I really like their chances a lot more on this higher star pool because USA skill cap goes hard always. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Totally agree. Totally agree with that. You have four four OW, OWC members just on the USA roster for three WC. I mean, I have no doubt that they'll be you know able to play that pool. Let's move on. Germany versus Indonesia. Um, really quick seven zero. Uh, you know, Indonesia to their you know with all due respect, they tried their best. I think Germany is just was you know unfortunately too much of a powerhouse for them to handle. Yeah, I uh, I'll say that I overestimated Indonesia coming into it. I thought they would uh, have more of a shot on hidden, and I will say that on the hidden one, I'm almost certain they underperformed. Uh, but I don't know. Curler match cost warrior, and uh, 
They uh, also, I will say, Indo they did perform well on the DT one. Uh, didn't get it because Germany got an insane team score on the DT one. But uh, I, you know, Indo had some stronger points. They did show something, but I mean, ultimately, no match for for Germany. Yeah, you can't you can't help to to kind of lose that really strong opening pick. I think both of these teams were really strong, particularly mechanics. But I think Indonesia just generally couldn't keep up with the skill cap. I feel like a lot of the maps that they could have done really well on, um, like you said, the hidden one, and as well as that, the mechanics heavy maps like DT one, DT two, um, those maps are also in favor of Germany. It was going to be really close contention, but Indonesia kind of seemed to have struggled a little bit. They couldn't keep good accuracies. They couldn't hold up to good combos. They had a few good outline minor performances here and there, like the DT1, which was really close, but Germany just looked way more consistent. And uh, they, they ended up just completely dominating in the scoreline-wise. They did have a few couple close maps, but um, yeah, I feel like Indo struggled a little bit in that late stage map pool, and I think that was kind of their downfall, and especially Germany having that kind of X-factor of Krilla kind of um, flexing out onto those maps that might not be Germany's particular kind of key strengths, but it didn't change that. It didn't change it. Uh, Germany was still so, so good, and uh, yeah, it's unfortunate for Indo. I did expect a, a closer matchup, but yeah, Germany were just too strong. Yeah, I agree with you on the skill cap, but it was kind of funny looking at Indo throughout the tournament because they were really a powerhouse in the early stages, and we kind of see this across some rank ranges with them as well. They are just all around a really consistent roster. They were really, really good in the early stage, just getting caught out a little bit by the later skill cap pools, and as you said, not having that X-Factor of Kriller really going to make the difference for them. But, you know, if you have a, if you have a consistent low round, that really really makes it good for you to get to late stages across a lot of different tournaments. So really going to be expecting Indo to maybe grind that skill cap and they're going to get late stage in many more tournaments to come because they are really consistent. All right. Yeah, I mean, you know, Indonesia, unfortunate, uh, you know, unfortunate how they went out, but they still had a good run. Nonetheless, moving on to the next loses bracket match, Hong Kong versus Italy. Now, Italy got two points off of Hong Kong. They ended their match seven to two. Um, and also Italy in general made an incredible showing of themselves with 3WC. They knocked out Poland. A lot of people um, were expecting them not to get as far and definitely underestimate, especially in the early stage uh, for the round of 16. They went up against Brazil and that, you know, close in predictions and whatnot. Uh, and throughout the bracket stage, they have proven their doubters wrong time and time again until they had until they had reached hong kong and you know that to me is probably like the glass ceiling the stopper to their run yeah there's just uh they never had really had a shot against hk unfortunately as much as italy is pretty good they have they don't have the depth to their roster to outmatch suwagi mcy4 uh it's just not really possible as much as they did take two points uh jazag's law bears out they still win the jazag map and that's really all i care about uh I have not been proven wrong yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I I think um, both these teams, despite kind of Indo, uh, not Indo, sorry, Italy, kind of being the underdogs uh, in this matchup, uh, both those teams had a really similar theme where they both stuck to kind of a core trio slash duo. Of course, you have Italy with uh, Arj, Shadamonico, and Kirochi, kind of those three star players performing most of the maps, with Hong Kong being quite similar, having uh, Suwagi Nims for I4 for almost every single map, and Shiro Yuki for most of the rest. They did sometimes sub in F2X for the tapping heavy maps instead of Shiro Yuki, but both those teams had a really similar theme. And when you think about it, you know, when you have the core of Italy against the core of Hong Kong. It's just a general outshining altogether. Um, and it's a shame to see Italy go, unfortunately, but I think at that point it was kind of inevitable. Hong Kong just outshined them in, in almost every way, except for maybe precision. Um, but even then, Hong Kong, of course, could have just banned it, and, and boom, that's one of their strongest maps already gone. And you already have you only have one or two maps left after that, and even then Hong Kong are great on Hard Rock. So uh, yeah, Italy had such a little chance, but they had a really good run. Definitely a memorable one, and I really, really like this uh, the run that they did. So I I'm still happy for them. I'm happy for the run that they made, even if they got knocked out. Yep, I love Italy. I love Italy a lot. I hecking love Italy. They're so good. I mean, I think they did definitely perform to the extent that they could with that extremely strong uh, three-man core of Kirochi, Shadow Modico, and uh, Arj. Like, I, I guess that's really enabled by 3WC being 3v3. Obviously, they can't pull that type of thing off in OWC where you need to have four, four players per roster. But, you know, when you have a strong core as strong as theirs, like, 
they're just really one player off from being able to reach mid stages, I think, of OWC. And in 3WC, you know, one strong player off of hell. They took it the finals. Who says they can't go further? I mean, they're just that strong and really excited to see where they go from here. Hope they don't give up because they are on the cusps of something great, I think. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Uh, I I hope that they do something similar uh, in OWC. I don't again the fourth player syndrome is a questionable uh, point, but they if if 3WC says anything it means that they've got potential to do really well in OWC this year. All right, and you know, everyone was kind of expecting this match to come out, but it was the it was the last losers bracket match between Germany and Hong Kong. Uh that match also ended 7 to 5. With, uh, with Germany being unfortunately knocked out of the tournament. That, to me, you know, that was like one of the few matches that to me were super unpredictable. It was very hard to find a clear-cut winner. You have Kriller on the German team who, you know, we have seen his tournament performances in closed, in Corsair's Open, and across many other tournaments. Um, same with Suwagi, MCY4. MCY4 made an incredible showing in Roundtable recently, as well as other tournaments. And, you know, Suwagi has just been this powerhouse prevalent through all of, you know, through many tournaments all throughout the year. So to me, it was very hard to figure out, oh, what's the correct call on that match? Yeah, and I mean, the craziest thing about that is if you look at the MP link, after the match, they played tiebreaker and Germany won it by 300k. And that just goes to show you how close this matchup was. Hong Kong obviously winning it by 7 to 5. That's just a break point, really. And, you know, Germany just... They had so many opportunities, but if they had just gotten that one and they could force that tiebreaker, it would have been a different outcome. And that's just the craziest thing to me. It just really goes to show the volatility of OSU tournaments, but also for Hong Kong. Got yourself back in grand finals. I believe they were the victors last year, right? Yes. Yes, they were. Yeah. So yes. they're going to have the opportunity to try and hold out their title defense here, but they've got some really tough opposition coming up in the United States and then up in the winner's bracket, South Korea, if they manage to get past them. So... Obviously, Hong Kong, congrats on making it through, but they've got a tough road ahead. Yeah, this uh, this matchup between Germany and Hong Kong is kind of a pure example of why those tournaments are so, so damn exciting. Because you always have that massive what, what if factor, right? You have this um, massive what if, what if this person didn't miss? What if this person maybe held a little extra combo? And um, what if the timing of this miss was different? And this matchup is kind of a pure example of that. There are so many really close matches and so many unfortunate misses from one or two players from both respective teams, which could have really flipped the playing field. But on top of that, we had some really great performances. We had, I think, the most exciting map for me, at least, because I was the one casting it, was that hidden two, oh, sorry, hidden three. Uh, where Germany won just barely off the back of Kriller with a score that absolutely no one could compare to, basically 1v3 in the entirety of Hong Kong, uh, with an 878k score, 1,000 1, combo, massive, massive uh, gap and massive clutch, which gave Germany some huge hopes, huge, huge hopes. Uh, but unfortunately, they, they ended up um, missing on that final map of that free mod 3. And that was also really close. I was hoping that maybe Akarinia could maybe carry with that hard rock factor, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't enough and uh, Germany couldn't make it. But honestly, fantastic match and fantastic showing from Germany. Germany have shown some really good potential players. I think the MVP of this team, aside from Krilla, of course, I think goes to Akarinia. I think Akarinia deserves kind of rookie of the tournament for that team. Um, and I am so excited to see what he's going to do in OWC if he manages to get through because he is such an incredible, flexible mechanics player, especially on the double time, especially on the hard rock and the precision. I couldn't be more hyped to see what he does in OWC if he makes it through. All right. Yeah. So really awesome finals weekend. Lots of interesting matches. So grand finals now. We're going to do some grand finals predictions for 3WC. And number one, the first match is, of course, loser's bracket match. United States versus... Hong Kong. Oh boy! Like, <laughs> well, this is uh, this, this is, is a tough. De this is a tough decision. I, you know, <laughs> you you have the three WC winners versus you know, the United States tale of, you know, get knocked down early round, come back up. It happened in OWC. We might three it. We might see it in three WC. So this to me is really hard. <laughs> The thing, the thing is, the United States roster is so incredibly stacked and diverse. I think, I think they definitely made an upgrade from last year. 
But I feel like if we were to use the previous match between Hong Kong and Germany as kind of a, a, a lesson, I think Germany are a little, are kind of very similar to the US uh, where they have a very diverse core but still have very good standout skill sets. But I think the big outlier here is that Germany had a lot more contested, conflicted skill sets for Hong Kong. Both of these teams are really good on hard rock. Both of these teams are really good on mechanics and aim. So, but for the USA, they're very different. They're a lot stronger on the tech. They're a lot stronger on the gimmick, but they still have really, really good mechanics players and hard rock players. I feel like the United States are going to win purely on the flexibility alone and having multiple X factors on their team. Um, Hong Kong, despite having Su Wang and MCY4, quite literally two of the best players in the in the damn world. Um, I think the USA went on flexibility. Um, I think they've got way more options. They 100% dominate Hong Kong on gimmick and hidden. Um, and they could easily clutch it out on tech, despite being Hong Kong being good on that. So my prediction is that the USA win. I think they're going to take it probably 7 to 4, 7 to 5. 7 That's to 4, guess. okay. And that is exactly my prediction jesus That's, you you uh, think you think it's gonna be seven to four too okay miles I, you know, yes. you're USA man. all right as a uh, captain america here for wc 2020 <laughs> uh those were the days the hong kong slapped our asses in grand finals and you know this is a different tournament three years later but i still think usa probably takes it for those reasons shiba but i think it's gonna be a little bit closer on some skill sets you can't really give usa mm. that much of a definitive advantage on some of those skill sets because Obviously, like, Suwagi and MTY, just such a scary duo on gimmick on Hidden. You can't really, you can't really say it's definitive to the United States, although they have really strong Hidden players as well. But, I mean, I think USA takes it off the virtue of they're going to have the players that step up and are able to match uh, those of Suwagi or MTY that could pop off on any given map. Looking at Decaton, looking at Takedo, hoping they have some star performances as well as some players like Trail Mix. But I really think all of them are capable, and I think they're going to take it maybe... Maybe in tiebreaker, maybe 7-5. Going to be really freaking close. Hong Kong can win this. We're just talking heads here. It's really tough to predict, as you said. I'll just say that I think the problem for me is I don't see any truly guaranteed picks for HK, while I do see picks I would consider truly guaranteed for the US, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, like, Man, you yes, have to be the exactly. Debbie Doubter and I have to go That's Hong a, Kong, but I, I, I mean, do agree. I think the United States you... will, will win against Hong Kong. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I just think that, you know, Despite Suwagi, MCY4, and you know Shiraha Yuki, I think there's just a lot more diversity. I, I would say on the United States team in general, they can cover a lot more things, in my opinion. Okay, now so uh, Hong Kong wins, and they post this screenshot on Twitter, and we all yeah. get clowned. <laughs> yeah. Ready? You ready? Yeah. You know Listen, United Hong States, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Listen, too. Before oh, I get before I get Gunter <laughs> yes, on Twitter. It's it's very clear that Hong Kong are an unbelievable squad. I think having having two incredible players in Swaggy and MCY4 has pushed them really far, but they still have great players in the back. Uh, you know, F2X has showed up in particular. I think he's doing really good on the tapping mechanics. I think he's going to definitely match up to players like Decaden and Lugia on the speed, on the double time stuff. But yeah, I, I just, honestly, it's really just a matter of flexibility. I just think they cover more skill sets. As you mentioned before, Nuts, I see... I don't see any guaranteed wins for Hong Kong. Not to say they're not going to put up a fight. I think they're going to do great. But I think just USA just outflex them. And there are maps that USA definitely win over Hong Kong. And Hong Kong do have some good maps. They do have the hard rocks. They do have some of the aim heavy maps. Uh, you know, US might have a bit of trauma from the number one. Uh, but I think, I still think that number one could be hotly no contested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. Uh... Yeah. Really awesome, really awesome prediction. <laughs> Team USA, you know, that is our full circle bias here right now. USA, Next USA, match. USA. <laughs> First potential match, we're going to go United States versus South Korea. Um, for me personally, this is really hard because I'm a Korean American. So do I root for my, <laughs> the country that's in my blood or the country that I reside in? <laughs> but I, I'll let, I'll let Miles go first with this one. Okay, so, um... Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. It really depends on if you think the United States scales better than South Korea. Obviously, that matchup was so freaking close in finals last week. South Korea just edging them out. 7-5, to five, couldn't be any closer. But we saw the same sort of shift happen in OWC where United States on that grand finals pool, this pool, 7.7 .7 star Nomad 1, USA skill cap has in the last like six years always shined through 
when you get to grand finals. It is really hard to bet against them. As good as SK looks, I think they're really going to be depending on some of those X-Factor performances. In OWC, you saw players like Alec Risimo get a little bit skill capped by grand finals, along with some other players like Amamiya Kokoro, who has also improved a lot, though. Going to be looking to not get skill capped by this pool, but it's really going to be, I think, worst HR player. It's the X factors on both of these teams are going to have to be going full force during this matchup to have any kind of way to predict this. But, you know, with how good SK is looking, uh, I, I don't like voting against the US, but I'll, I'll say SK like 7 4. Oh, or okay. Seven. But it's, it's really hard to guess. You can't really give many of these teams like skill sets that they definitively went on. I would say USA on speed. South Korea will probably ban it out. But after that, like, what do you give to who? Like, there's so many good players. Like, Decaden, Decaden, Trail Makes. That, that whole t- both the teams are really good. Stop trying to predict this. 7 6 South Korea. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it goes to tiebreaker, if I'm being real honest. Like, if, if this match happens, it's going to go to tiebreaker. Surely. I mean, I'd agree. Yeah. I, um, uh, I don't see I, how it I doesn't. will say this much. Um, Tehan Mingu Manse. So, South Korea. That's my pick. <laughs> Epic. Uh, Rock him with the bloodstream. So, uh, my thoughts on this is um, I feel like it's going to be very similar, if not nearly identical to the previous match in finals, because I feel like although United States are going to win on the mechanics more, I feel like South Korea still have maps that will excel over the United States that are very similar to the scenario in last week. Um, South Korea still very clearly excel on the gimmick, on the reading, on most of the time the hiddens as well. I think United States might have a better case here because of Takedo um, definitely winning on the outs game department. I think the hidden one's going to be really hotly contested. Um, but I think overall, I think it's going to stay the same. Uh, obviously, I think United States will win, will win maybe one or two extra maps because of their strong mechanics, you know, USA, as you mentioned, as Miles mentioned earlier, they always excel mechanics. That's always the very frightening thing about the United States. And that's why they're so, so scary in the late stages. Um, but I still think South Korea take this. I feel like Jean okay. Young and Allegrissimo have significantly improved this tournament. I feel like they're being very overlooked. And I feel like those, those players are going to keep up with players like Lugia, players like Decaden <laughs> on those speedy stuff. I believe in South Korea. I, I <laughs> honestly, right, Nats, I hate to be biased, but I hope they get the revenge. <laughs> what's your prediction, yeah. Nuts? Well, uh, I'll spoil and just upfront say that I will also be joining you on the hype train, but... Uh, see, this is going to be like the last the, match. They're going to... The well, United look, I... It and then they're gonna I would be Twitter. happy if they did that. I would be really happy if they proved us wrong here. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, high hard USA supporter look, here. My I pick, just, my pick so is RSK winning, so... It's just I will say well, the thing is that, that even if the United States wins, they still have to win the bracket reset after that. Yeah, so. I'll I'll say it's just uh, Korea. Uh, like my prediction is predicated on some at least one other player on Korea stepping up to you know close in match cost wise on worst HR player, which has happened a lot of the matches. It's been different. It's been uh, especially Jong Woo Young and Amamiya Kokoro have been kind of the two big ones, but one of them really have to step up. Uh, I think they're they're going to need that uh, because the concern with HK is that uh, HK cannot two Y game MCY four cannot match the depth of the US roster. South Korea can, but they still need the top performers to be able to actually beat them. But yeah, SK seven to six, seven to five is waiting for the Twitter HK. post. Waiting for the Twitter post. All right, yeah. let's move on. Um, if Hong Kong wins, Hong Kong versus South Korea, I still think South Korea takes it against Hong Kong. Yeah, South, South Korea kind of destroy Hong Kong, to be honest. I can't. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> the, 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 I the bulls I, destroy. Yeah, I, I, no, I, really, I, really, I really, I really, I really hate to, I really hate to be that, be that guy. But uh, South Korea just kind of um, shred in depth, and they can, eat, they can definitely match Suwagi and MCY four. Sure, Suwagi and MCY four are going to do great, um, but they can still fight really hard on the on the uh, Hong Kong picks. They could easily make some trades. I'm not saying Hong Kong are going to necessarily underperform or just do bad. I just feel like on paper with these rosters and with the depth, you know, if uh, if South Korea can kind of go toe-to-toe with the United States, I feel like South Korea are just going to shred Hong Kong purely just because of their flexibility and the fact that 
it not many teams can, but South Korea have the players to match Suwagi and MCY4. And you know, when the plan is having Suwagi and MCY4 go kill, um, sometimes that's not possible when you have teams that have players that can match that. And that's why I think South Korea may, of course, it's not going to be a stump. I'm not expecting it to be a stump, but I am 100% expecting South Korea to win. If if Hong Kong if uh, Hong Kong beat USA. Yeah, yeah okay. I, uh, I, I, I SK seventy two. It's uh, yeah, oh SK seventy two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll go hard. I'll go hard on it. I uh, My God. I don't know. It, you know. I don't know if that's going to be entirely accurate, but look, I'm I'm favoring SK. We'll, we'll see what that's... happens after the United right. States faces off Hong Kong. All right, Miles, what's your pick? Is it time for me to become contrarian? I mean, I guess I guess it's time to explain why Hong Kong is winning uh, seven to five here. So okay. I mean, <laughs> okay. If you're okay. if you're picking, um, all right. If you're picking for Hong Kong, you're picking for Suwagi and MCY, two of the strong aim players we've seen in the tourney scene these days. Obviously, their opposition on that is going to really be worse HR player Amamiya Kokoro, probably Allegarissimo, but I think depth-wise, it really does go towards South Korea on this matchup. But when it comes to pure star power, when you get to this skill cap, Hong Kong is actually like probably the best team remaining with Suwagi and MCY. MCY didn't look too great in Corsair's close this weekend. But obviously, this is a whole different tournament. Star rating going to be a little lower, definitely where MCY is going to be a little more comfortable. It's going to take an unreal performance from them. But on that unreal performance, I think Hong Kong can win. Like, there's not too many skill sets where South Korea truly can abuse that roster if they have all, uh, all cannons firing. So to put the flag on the board, I'll say Hong Kong, like 7-5, but... It's gonna be a really right. difficult matchup to call. I, I, I respect, respect the optimism. I respect. I definitely respect. I, re the I respect it. I respect because, it. I respect the exploration. Genuinely, on paper, you can't. You can see a chance for Hong Kong win, but yeah, I, I just yeah. feel like South Korea just win. On it's just, too many I maps. honestly see triple tiebreaker weekend. That's all I'm saying. Is like I, I, I can foresee the double tiebreaker or whatever. That's okay. We're gonna move on to different tournament. Thank you guys. Three other, you know, Twitter, Twitter incoming. I'm about to see it, you know, come come yeah. tomorrow. I like to be um, around. Corsair's closed quarterfinals recap. Um, first match we're gonna go over Suwagi versus White Cat. Now this was a match that everybody was looking forward to because you have uh you know former number one, Mr. Black Dog Five, aka White Cat, and then superstar Hong Kong player Suwagi. Really interesting match. Really good match in general. All right. Um I, I just think that. White Cat got super, super unlucky on a lot of his picks. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, Suwagi came in there and uh, kind of smacked around White Cat, something you don't really see very often. On the aim map, Suwagi beating White Cat on virtually all of his picks. It was a really dominant match. 6-1, to one, I think the final score was. Something you kind of really, like, even when White Cat is, like, sight-reading and, like, kind of trolling, you never really see someone, like, come out that strong against him. Like, White Cat being one of the best aim players ever, usually able to win that. But Suwaki just popping off, and I'm really happy to see it. He's so good right now. Yeah, FC's the Nomad 1, right? It's, uh, it's yeah, almost 8 stars, just straight yeah. up FC's it, yeah. I mean, I mean, Suwagi made it made it very clear that he is a super, super strong contender for aim for king of tournament aim against White Cat. White Cat has always been known, always been known as one of the best uh, tournament aim players in the world. He's proven it so many times, um, and I honestly don't think it's a major matter of White Cat underperforming. Maybe under practicing a few maps, maybe uh, choking a couple maps. I feel like Nomad One was a bit of an unfortunate situation. Um, but Suwagi just just showed that he he can really fight back. He can really do well against similar skill sets to White Cat. White Cat's only victory was on the number one three. And in fairness, that's that's kind of the only one that I see White Cat definitely taking over, having a really dominant score. Might I add, you know, one miss on this number one three to twelve hundred combo. White Cat's still really really good on number in general, but alt and aim are two things that he's super, super strong at. But just generally, aim in general, Suwagi showed that he can fight back, and he did really, really good this match. Um, he won on all the other options too, except for the number three that I previously mentioned. But yeah, I'm super, super excited to to kind of see what Suwagi will do in the future. He's already shown to be really, really good on aim, but to outshine someone like White Cat on both aim-heavy picks in the hidden one of the normal one, that's impressive. That's yeah, definitely Yeah, Suwagi's impressive. like, he, he's a... He's a you know, he's a power player. He's here to win. Like, he's here to he's here to fight. Um, next match we're going to go over is Rimuru versus Kriller, another winner's bracket match. Um, you know, 
Curler superstar. We had him on full circle last week for the interview, and Curler, like he he definitely came to eat. Like that man, that man showed showed us what's up. He scored incredibly well on his opening map, um, and honestly, just he just shined. Like I don't know what more to say. <laughs> Yeah, he has been, over the course of the last, like, year and a half, Kriller has really shot himself sort of to the top of the scene, like, for a long time. He really used to be this underground player, didn't really see him in too many tournaments. But now, like, he's really pushed himself into the upper echelon of tournament players, now in winners, semis, and course ace close. And he hasn't really, like, had any real resistance yet. We're going to see how he does this week against, I think, is it Emrek? Yeah, it's Emrek, winners, semis. That is going to be a oh. hell of a match to watch. But yeah, against Rimuru, like, he was able to sweep him across the board, banning out two speed picks, and then just running away with the match after that. There's really not really much else you could say about it. He looked thoroughly dominant across the board. Yeah, Curler Shred, it was, uh, you could uh, you could say it was a stomp, honestly. It was, uh, there was one point that uh, Curler dropped, and I felt like it was a bit of an underperformance on the side of Curler. Uh, you expect him to look a lot better on the Nomad Tech but uh, yeah, yeah. I feel and, I feel yeah, like, like of, of all of all of all the maps for to, for Krilla to have lost, aside from winning all the maps, I was expecting No More Four to kind of be an easy win for Krilla. But yeah. in fairness, <laughs> yeah. this was a pick from Rimuru. Rimuru's kind. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you agree with me, but Rimuru's had a history in one v one tournaments of picking maps you do not expect him to do well on, and he just does well on them. He just performs well. Um, yeah, he just wins. He's kind of he kind of has though those wild card situations, despite kind of being well known for being great on speed and mechanics and stuff yeah all right so yeah i mean unfortunately uh you know rimuru got knocked down to lose his bracket and then you know he's unfortunately out of the tournament now given the result of his match earlier today but we will touch on that not this weekend we'll touch on that next episode um let's talk about the next match does versus taquito come here come here listen close everyone what the heck was this match number one six to four um Mosh does won the tech picks and Takedo won no mod two. Let's let's talk about this for a second. Um this was a Cinderella story that defied all, all odds. I <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um Yeah. This was this I don't know what a, happened. I don't know what happened. This, this had a very strange outcome, honestly. I I did not expect Mustache to uh pull that much of a fight against someone as flexible as Takedo. Uh but this is this is just proof that that Mustache can can win it out. There were multiple maps that that Mustache won very very closely, but he won on maps that, you know, some map, some people would consider Takedo winning on. You know, the uh, Innocent Hidden, that was definitely something that I expected Takedo to win on. Um and yeah, tech as well, as you mentioned. It was super close, might I add. It was about, what, 15k? That was a stupidly close matchup, but um, yeah, I mean, great performance from Mustache. It was a shame that Takedo ended up outshining and knocking him out, but uh, but wow. Good, good outlying performance there. Yeah, I mean, this matchup, it just seemed like a fever dream. Obviously, you saw some picks not going really the way you expected, but as we were talking about in 3WC, that's just the awesome volatility of those two tournaments. Uh, Takedo obviously winning that matchup 6-4. to four. He went on this weekend, already won his first match, going to see how he fares later on in loser's bracket. But obviously a great performance from Mustache. Being the 16th seed, it was always going to be an uphill battle for him. But putting on a good show, definitely not going out without a fight. Even closed has its fiestas, I guess. That's, uh, that's all I have to say on the topic. <laughs> Yeah, it just happens. Um, we're going to move on to probably the most interesting match of that weekend. Karcher or MX10001 versus Demonicle. That was that was the first match of the weekend to go to tiebreaker. Um, Demonicle, you know, I think prior to close, not a lot of people heard about him. He, you know, showed up in some recent tournaments, got invited to close after a uh, round table. And I don't know, he... He's seriously up and coming. I mean, has been great, like really well known in the Singaporean scene. I don't think a lot of international people knew about him, though. I don't know. I think he's been dipping in and out of relevance. I don't know if he's been perfectly active during a very prolonged period of time, but I've known about the Monocle for a while. I think. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've, yeah. Known, I've known the Monocle for quite a bit. I've kind of known him for more. Yeah, of his I only knew him in play. the Singaporean scene. I just never saw him that much in the international one. Yeah, I've yeah. more yeah. I've more noticed Demonical based off his solo scores. I, I he's only kind of recently been kind of an up and comer in the tournament scene, especially in the global scene. 
Um, but these guys, these guys, I think the theme for both these players, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure I was the one who commented this match. Uh, I think th both of these players kind of had a rejuvenated mindset. Both of these guys were really pumped. Both of them were really excited to kind of get back into it and, and push through. Uh, you know, Karcher, I think I think one of the core reasons for Karcher's underperformance um, you know, you know, really on paper, you would expect Karcher to do a little better uh, than he did, placing seed 13, uh, when most people predict him to be top five. Um, but he he had a he had a lot of issues with his computer. He had a lot of studies. He had a lot of bugs. But um, you know, if you follow his Twitter, you'd actually find out that just before the match was demonical, he lost it. He he lost those issues, and he he managed to kind of get his confidence back. And with going against someone like demonical, who not only has kind of opposite skill sets, Karcher, but also came back from a great match against Wycat despite losing it pulling up a great fight um, I think both these players were really really motivated and really really ready to go and that led to a, a really really close match mm -hmm. Honestly, most unexpected thing for me in this matchup was Demonical getting 600k on Silver Temple that is that is a score I don't expect considering when when I've been noticing him earlier in the tourney scene he's really more of a mechanics player not really the strongest reading player getting that point so definitively. I'm sure Karcher would have banned that out if he had known how strong Demonical was on that. So definitely a player to keep your eyes out for going forward in the tourney scene. But Karcher, if his lag is gone and we start to see some of that OWC form, he's going to become a force to be reckoned with in this loser's bracket. Oh yeah, absolutely. So now we're going to move to the second tiebreaker match of the weekend, you know, <laughs> which is Ninerig versus MCY4. Ninerig unfortunately had to FF his first match against Rimuru uh, due to technical difficulties. His mouse, like, just wasn't working. Really, like, unlucky of the unlucky circumstances. But um, I think he really put himself out there against MCY4. Everyone was, you know, new MCY4. They saw him play and... You know, I think Ninerik just really showed everyone up. I think they, you know, he completely defied expectations of him. I, I think I think of all of the matches that we've kind of deemed as very surprising, this by far is the most surprising and in the best way possible. Um, lots of people kind of looked at Ninerik and thought, you know, this guy's only good at speed. What else is he going to do? Man, he proved everybody wrong that match. And in, in, he did so, so good. So many points that... Well, not only were quite close, but maps that you definitely expected MCY Force to take, like the Hard Rock One, the Hard Rock, uh, no, sorry, not the Hard Rock, uh, the Normal Three. That Normal Three was also incredibly close, might I add. Uh, 1,000 point difference for Ninerit, but the fact that he can keep up with someone like MCY Four and the Normal Three is super, super insane. Uh, yeah, Ninerit kind of proved his flexibility. You know, lots of people looked down on him. Lots of people thought he was just a speed one trick, but he showed up and he put up a tiebreaker against MCY4. That That is an insane opponent to go tiebreaker on. You know, he may have lost it, unfortunately, towards the end, but he showed up. He showed everyone that he's he's more than just a speed player. And I'm so, so excited to see what he's going to do in the future. He's been on a solo ladder rampage recently, and he's definitely getting a massive confidence boost. So the next tournament, I'm going to see him kind of be made to be flexible. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what he's going to do. Okay, so what I would like to say about this match before we move on, I think we're a little behind schedule, is that if you had told me before this match that Ninerik was going to sweep all the aim maps against MCY4, I would have called you crazy. But Ninerik won all three of them. Nomad won, Hard Rock won, uh, Hidden won, all going the way of Ninerik. Along with, uh, wasn't it the Nomad 3 as well? That's just crazy. Those are skill sets I would have thought every day of the week MCY4 would win against Ninerik. So as you mentioned, just the well-roundedness of Ninerik that a lot of people wouldn't really expect really did shine through this week. And obviously forcing that tiebreaker, which MCY4 did win, but obviously going to be a rough road ahead for MCY. It got a lot of really strong players ahead of him in losers. Yeah, Nats, do you have anything to say about, any thoughts about Ninerik before we move on to predictions? Uh, just a small comment, I can say that it is absolutely insane to think that Ninerik had a real shot on the AR6 map. It's just true. Uh, Silver true. Temple, true I cannot real. believe that Ninerik had a shot on that, but... He, dude, he's just becoming it, so well-rounded. It's a shame that people only see him as a speed run trick. He is just so much more than that, and Close was like the perfect opportunity to to showcase that for him, and I'm really happy that he was able to do so. Anyways, moving on, Semi's predictions. Um, obviously we had Rimuru versus Takeda earlier today. We're not going to be covering that. We'll cover that next week. Uh, first match, we're going to do Emmerich versus Kriller. This is the battle of titans right here. You know, current number one in the world. You know, Kriller is in the limelight. This this VIP man. Um, 
And what are your <laughs> thoughts, Miles? It's Emric. What the hell are you gonna do? I don't, I, like, I don't know. It's look, Kriller's awesome, but it's Emric. I think it's like six to two, probably up to Emric. Pool's even harder. Emric skill cap. It's over. Actually, yeah, Mr. Poolermans, like Miles, you know, you're you're here. You you know the pool so well. You you made this. This is your baby. How do you feel about the players going into this? And you know, especially Emmerich and Kriller. Yeah, I mean, th this pool, this map pool is my child. We did soldier it. It is um eight stars up against the best skill cap player we've ever freaking seen. Um, I think Emrek bans out two reading picks and could just about win everything else. But you know, Kriller, it, it's hard to bet against Emrek, but Kriller has looked so good. It's Definitely not going to be, I think, as definitive as you would guess. But still, can't bet against uh, Emrek on this map pool. Going to go like maybe maybe 6-3, to 6-4 if Kriller pops off. But it's really hard. This is going to be a hard matchup for Kriller. Uh, I think this is going to be closer than a lot of people think. I feel, I think... I, I think it'll go like 6-4, but I can't yeah. give a really definitive, like... Clear cut winner, personally. Um, um, Emrek absolutely shuts on speed and mechanics, but I think Krill has a shot. He's the number one player in the world. It's really hard to bet on him, like like Miles yeah. said. Uh, next match, we're gonna do the losers bracket: Chikoni versus Karcher. That's gonna be interesting. Ooh, uh, Chikoni versus Karcher. So you have Chikoni, who's really been rock solid on um. On the DT and the Hard Rock, we've seen it throughout the scene for the last year since CPMC. Really strong Nomad Hard Rock DT. He's kind of going to be stripped of that Hard Rock advantage against a player like Karcher. Also really strong on that mod. But I think it's always the funny thing when you watch two players who aren't really good at gimmick. I think it just depends. Who is going to decide to take those free points or who's going to think of banning it out? Because neither of them particularly strong on the reading picks. But there are still existent in the pool, so... Someone's going to have to be there to at least strike them out or pick them. But I think if Karcher did have his PC fixed, if his hand is starting to heal, if we go back a little bit to that OWC Karcher, you can't really bet against that either. Where Chikoni, obviously so strong on his pick so far, going to win a few of them, probably going to take four, four or five of them, maybe even force a tiebreaker. But in that tiebreaker scenario, can you take anyone other than Karcher? Yeah, I uh, I think the main concern here is really just which Karcher we're going to see. I uh, I don't expect we're going to be seeing the OWC Karcher quite yet. We'll probably have to wait a bit longer to see that. But uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, in terms of scoreline, maybe hedging. Say six, six to five, maybe it'll go to TB. Uh, I don't oh. know. It's... Uh... Uh... It's really? you know, maybe, really, a, really maybe a little bit of hopium for <laughs> Dude, Chikoni. So I, uh, this, this, is, this is a really tough match to predict. I feel like both these players can do really good on Hard Rock in particular. I think those are two really conflicting skill sets. Karcher probably wins on the hidden, probably wins on the gimmicky stuff. Uh, but Chikoni is going to absolutely, in, in my opinion, sweep on the mechanics heavy stuff. It's, it's more kind of a, I think this match is going to be a back and forth. I think it will lead to a TB. I think Karcher will pull it out. I think Karcher has a lot stronger tiebreak consistency. And uh, yeah, but it's definitely going to be close. I think this is going to be very much a, a back and forth match between both of these guys' dominant skill sets until they're forced to pick into a map that might be dangerous. Um, yeah, it, it's just, it, it's going to be a feat to watch. Definitely don't miss that one. White Cat versus Angry. That's the next winners. That's the next losers bracket match. Excuse me. Um, I feel like this is going to be another case of, you know, what happened uh, last week between Tsuwagi and White Cat. You know, you have an Asian up-and-coming powerhouse against, you know, one of the most well-known players in the game. All right, so we got Gato Bronco here, and we've got Enri. Enri looked so freaking good last week. I think he's probably going to pull this one out. But once again, it's almost similarly to Karcher, even though they're in different situations. It's which White Cat are we really going to get? The White Cat that we kind of got to know a few years ago, one of the most consistent tourney players in the world. If we get to see that White Cat, it's going to be a really close and interesting match. But if we see the White Cat that was really present, honestly, against Suwagi, I think Enri might sweep the floor with him. Maybe 6-3 maybe in favor of Enri. White Cat probably takes the aim picks, but when it comes to things like reading, gimmick, tech, tech's probably going to be a contested skill set between these two players. But I think White Cat would probably be the one to pick it and be very disappointed if he gets breakpointed on that. But 
I think Henry just has more skill set to choose from, which is why I think he'll win it. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like uh, White Cat, despite having quite clearly some very dominating strengths in the aim and the in, particularly in the alt, I feel like people don't talk enough about White Cat's alt uh, and flow aim in general. Despite that, I yeah, I think Henry's kind of going on a on a losers bracket rampage. To be honest, he's been doing super good in his previous matchups. Uh, I feel like he's gonna shine and, and kind of blow people away on the speed in particular. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does on that. Uh, aside from that, I think White Cat outshines. I think I think the only surefire wins he's got is maybe the double time one, the Nomad one, the, the Hard Rock one. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, Emery's more flexible. Emery kind of wins on on many other skill sets on paper. It's crazy to think that uh, it's the case, but yeah, I uh, I think I might be picking Henry as well to to win this match. I'm on the Henry hype train. I'm so happy for him. You know, especially like. He he's shown up in a lot of tournaments, you know. He you know really made a name for himself these past few months, and I'm I'm happy to see him shine. All right, next match, Zudi versus MCY4. This is a this is another battle of the titans right here. We have Zudi Nader, who you know this Canadian tournament beast. Um, I don't know if anyone's had seen her solo scores lately, but she's been popping off. And then you have MCY4 uh, got in, um, one. Second place in the round table, enough to get him a ticket there. So, you know, he's definitely a, someone to look out for. This is just, you know, who wins? Yeah. This is a battle. I cannot lie to you. This is a kind of rematch of the ages, especially considering that it was Zuyinator that MCY4 managed to just win against in the round table second finals to advance to LA. Uh, so it's safe to say these guys have a rivalry. Zudi wants revenge, and Zudi, honestly, in the previous round table match, pulled some insane heroics and pulled some crazy scores. A match that you didn't expect Zudi to win on. I think particularly the speed and the, and the stream intensive maps, the tapping heavy maps, Zudi might have an edge on. MCY4 has kind of been known to struggle on these mechanics. Zudi as well, but she's outshined him multiple times in the previous tournaments that they've gone against each other. So I'm I'm excited to see to see these two duke it out once again for that revenge match. I'm so excited. This is a super fun match to watch. All right, uh, hey Zudi, do you think you're gonna win? Uh, I don't lose three times in a row, right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So no way. We, no, no <laughs> way, guys. Oh my God, we've got no Zudi right here for an interview, guys. <laughs> oh my God. He's here! I've infiltrated the stream, guys. Hello. Yeah, speaking oh of speaking of Zudi Nader, here she is. First of all, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, get interviewed by Corsace. It's um, kind of crazy, actually. I, yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell the stream, you know, just, you know, who doesn't know, but tell the stream a little bit about yourself. Yeah, of course. I'm uh, an Osu player. I have been playing Osu for a while. You might know me as the person that does full area. Um, and I've also been on Team Canada in OWC quite a couple of years now in a row, so I'm definitely a tournament player, a solo player, you know, well-known name, I would hope. So, nice to meet you all. Awesome to have you here once again. Thank you so much. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your general thoughts. We just went over your match against MCY4. Do you have any sort of um, concerns or, you know, general thoughts about your upcoming match? Um, I've been talking about it a bit on my stream, but uh, I definitely said this today. I think a lot of people are not feeling so confident. Me, one of them. Not just for the MCY match, but, you know, if I get a potential or whatever, but... Um, it's just because the, the map pools and the mashups are so freaking hard, so I really don't know what's going to happen. Um, but based on my previous knowledge from the roundtable, I think I am strategizing a little bit better, at least for the MCY match. Well, we won't reveal anything for you on here just yet, a little <laughs> bit of... But, um, you know, again, touching on the topic of Corsi's clothes, has anyone in particular impressed you or stood out to you or maybe even feel underrated? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at many of the matches too closely just because a lot of them are like out of my time zone. I can't really watch them, but it's really nice to see Suwagi come back because I know like a year ago or something, uh, I played some tournaments with Suwagi and I've seen Suwagi really shine, but I think uh, he kind of lost motivation for a little bit in the past year. But seeing him back and like destroying pretty much what's just destroying Corsairs right now, I'm really excited to see that match, especially with Malashevsky this upcoming weekend. Awesome to hear. 
who do you feel right now is your biggest tournament rival? Obviously, we've seen you in many tournaments in the past, and you are no stranger to the scene. So do you do you feel like you have a rival or maybe even a couple of allies in the scene right now? Um, the the top player scene is kind of funny in top tournament play because everyone is your rival and your ally at the same time, if that makes sense. So there's definitely a lot of people that I really, really respect. Um, I want to be like on a rivalry level with someone like Malashevsky. He's someone that I look up to, in a sense. I want to be good enough to beat him. Um, I thought that about some other players too, like uh, looking back, like you know, Bubble Man and Fancy Lad back in the day. But definitely right now, Malashevsky's up there. Uh, MCY is really surprising me. Such a powerhouse as well. Um, yeah, those the people that are on top right now. You know, I just want to be with the best. <laughs> You have remained a tournament and, uh, you know, a consistent tournament beast at the top. It's amazing to see you out here. Well, you know, but in general, how do you feel about where you are at right now in terms of tournaments and just Osu in general? I think I'm okay. Like, I'm still enjoying the game as much as I did however many years ago when I started. Um, a lot of people have noticed that I've taken some time now to focus on solo play and focus on my weaknesses, which I think is helping a little bit. Um, I know you guys touched on a little bit about the speed going into speed and stamina going into the next match with me and MCY4. So hopefully, like eventually, um, I can just be the one that has the upper hand in a matchup with two non-speed players. I just want to get to that point essentially. Um, yeah, definitely focusing on my weaknesses now. Uh, but tournament play has always been as as fun as it has always been. What about solo play or you know anything outside of solo play? How do you feel about that? Solo play is fine right now. I honestly feel like I'm in a little bit of a slump, like, uh, because I've been focusing a lot on my weaknesses, like I said. Uh, it almost like my strengths kind of dissipate a little bit. It's like my, my really good skills are taking a rest right now, but I think my aim is still really good, whatever, in tournaments. Um, I think I'm waiting for another big um, team tournament to come up because I definitely see my weaknesses shine a lot in uh the 1v1 format tournaments but i think i do way better in a team tournament so like of course stuff coming i'm gonna be looking forward to that as well just put in my aim there right and we'll be excited to see you there um last thing for us here zudi give us some of your predictions on the closed matches i don't know if you have the spreadsheet pulled up but we can just you know I rapid do. fire some matches okay awesome you know we can just we can just rapid fire some matches so obviously you would like to win against mty4 you're playing tomorrow at uh saturday 16 utc given that you you know you win that how do you feel about going between the winner of enry and white cat who do you think who do you think you're gonna face off at um against Honestly, I've been talking to Enry a little bit about, you know, just Corsair's clothes in general, because I'm pretty sure this is his first time playing. And Enry is practicing so freaking hard. Like, the reason why I'm scared of Enry is because of how much time he's putting into these pools. Like, he's doing really, really well. Um, and just overall, I think he has, um, you know, what I lack. So I suffer a lot from, uh, suffer a lot with my reading and my speed, which is what Enry really excels at. Um, YK, of course, if I go up against him, it's gonna be it's gonna be aim central over here. I'm pretty sure he still gaps me on speed and reading as well, but like I feel like <laughs> I feel like this might be the last weekend for me, but I'm gonna stay positive because I do wanna I do wanna make it through. <laughs> All right. Um you know, that is some amazing insight from you. Uh let's see, let's take a check about you know, some of the other losers bracket match. What about Shikoni Ch versus Karcher? How do you feel about that? I, I know that you've team teamed up with some of them in the past, actually. Yeah, I play uh I play full tech tournament with Chikoni. Um I don't know if I've actually ever been on a team with Karcher, at least off the top of my head, but uh, obviously Karcher, it's Karchin time, baby. But I feel bad because it's Karchin time. <laughs> Couch and die, baby. It's back. Um, he seems to be struggling a lot with the Osu lag spikes or something. I see him tweeting on, you know, or whatever. But I'm also someone that's that's actually kind of down about that too, because it's kind of affecting my gameplay too. So hopefully that isn't gonna mess him up too much this weekend. Um, I would like to see Karcher, I think, in the top three of this tournament for sure, just to mm. solidify that that Karch in time, man. Yeah. In fact, there's lots of players, lots of top players recently been struggling with that. I had recently like Karcher recovered from it. And it kind of ref it kind of reflected in that last match, but yeah, I know what you mean. It's been like a big struggle for lots of top players recently. Mine still yeah, sucks. It's, it's, when it's can mine get fixed? Oh, true, 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 <laughs> real and true. 
when I'm foraging. Let it's me out. I'm five digit. I'm not even good enough to notice, to be honest. That's I don't want to hear it. I don't think you're four digit because of the lag spikes, bud. Um, oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus. I'm too ranking. I have two tournaments to play next month that are four digit. We can oh, only ask for me. a functional game. Yeah. We can only pray for a functional we came, game. We tournaments. came here for the Zudi interview and she brought the heat. We didn't come How do you, work. Miles? I apologize. It, I apologize. It's fine. It's fine. I've been ragging you for being speed abuse for like two years. You, you can get that shot in. Dude, who said I was going to double tap the fucking hidden three this week? Oh, that That's was so me. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Dude. I think it's however long I've been doing these shows, you've been there and I'd be like, every single match, yep, she's getting speed abuse. She's getting speed abuse. Speed yeah, abuse you know what? It's fair. But eventually, I'll change you guys. Eventually. I think All now. Right. I think you win now. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still double oh, tapping in three. We we will see tomorrow, Zudi. Um, how do you feel about Malashevsky against Suwagi? Obviously, you played against Malashevsky, so <laughs> you know full you know full well <laughs> what that is like. Yeah, without looking at like uh overall stats or anything. Um, my match against Malashevsky, I think was. He was just unbeatable for that week. I mean, he pulled what, like five FCs. So, um, actually, someone was saying it when they were trying to review or like preview my match with Malashevsky. But if you don't FC against Malashevsky, you're probably gonna lose because him messing up is very, very rare. But I know Suwagi has like so many specialist skills. Maybe there's some maps that Suwagi has the upper upper hand on. I guess, but dude, I, anyone would be scared. Of and final match, Emric versus Kuriller. How do we feel about that one? I actually don't know, because I know Emric and Kuriller. They were both on my winning team of Corsair's uh, Open last year, and Kuriller pulled punches. Dude, Emric, like, carried our team. Like, this is, this is also... Yeah, little jets. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, the two little jits are fighting it out right now. It's gonna be, it's gonna be insane. <laughs> I think Kuriller, same thing, has, like, maps that... Uh, he will really have an edge on, like maps he will really, really specialize at, but is uh, kind of number one in the world as well, so um, I'm expecting like FCs out of both of them, honestly, on multiple things. I hope it's going to be a close match for these winning brackets. Like, these are both really good. Alright, thank you so much for joining us. It was a really, really awesome interview. I, I hope you had fun. I definitely did. For everyone watching, if you don't know who Zudi Nader is, check her out on Twitch. Follow her on Twitter. Check out her YouTube. She is a wonderful person, amazing tournament player. Once again, Zudi, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys for bringing me on. It's it's so nice to talk to Corsace themselves. So nice. So uh, nice. The corporation. The corporation. I've might have spoken. I, I am Kay, and this is Full Circle. Thank you all for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Peace. Bye.